In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass of the sixth Sunday of Easter we celebrate and begin at the Divine Mercy Chapel. Because in this chapel here at St. Casimir Church in Buffalo is a special memento. That memento is the vet are the vestments worn by St. John Paul during his Mass here in August, two Masses here in August of 1976. In that same niche is a rosary, which I received from him as a, as a priest student in Rome, and a chalice he gave as one of the gifts to the church. On this Mass, when we celebrate his 100th earthly birthday, we are blessed to be able to have Mass in the same church he celebrated two Masses in 1976. We remember his ministry and his presence.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. The crowd, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did for unclean spirits crying with loud shrieks came out of many who were possessed. And many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was a great joy in that city. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Today, as we celebrate Easter season and still rejoice at this table, hoping that we will rejoice with the full church and with each other in our homes and in our cafes and in our little family restaurants one day when we can see each other face to face and meet our friends and family and celebrate. We reflect upon these words in the context of the life of St. John Paul. As mentioned at the beginning of this Mass, on the day, the eve of his 100th birthday birthday, he had Mass at this very altar. He, was, he had two Masses here at this very altar. So I find it a grand privilege to be able to be here, preside at this Mass, and the rector of St. Casimir's, the only church in western New York where he overnighted two nights. So we have a special prayer room. And the rector opened for visitation. Well, he would want us to do one thing. I asked the people here at St. Casimir, what did, what did Carl Wojtyla, Cardinal Wojtyla, say when he was here? We have a lot of pictures. We have a a lot of memorabilia, we have his kids, but nobody remembers what he said. And so I said, well, our penance then is to read all his encyclical. There's a funny joke in Poland, when a priest went to confession, the worst priest go to confession to another priest, the worst uh, penance you could get is to read St. John Paul's doctoral dissertation, the action of the human being. It's very But it's in trickle for them. If there's any message I can leave with you, first of all, and most importantly, is the same thing that's on the Facebook post for this Mass, because it's so profound to me personally. Especially on this day, celebrating my 40th anniversary to the ordination of priesthood, this very day, 40 years ago. He said, there is no evil 
that Christ has not already suffered. There is no suffering that Christ has not already taken up in and through us. There is no terror that Jesus is Christ who had already not, has not suffered for us. Not in the past, but now. In, through, for, with us. So do not be afraid. And you know one of the ways he proclaimed that? He opened the Vatican like no other pope before him. Not just to bishops and cardinals and to act nice in front of him so they may get uh, uh, a raise, if you want to put it that way. But he opened his, his own dining room to people who suffer. One most explicit example is a good friend of mine who's deceased. Who, uh, whose best priest friend was murdered in church, killed by the band with a pastoral hand by a deranged marine. He invited him to sit at table. There's other examples of terror and through lost children, people in terrible tragedies. But there's one real example of where St. John Paul, listen to this one. A priest was going for a special audience to the Pope, and he saw this beggar right on the main road up to St. Peter's. And the, the priest turned to the beggar and gave him a couple lira. And he said, the priest asked him, who are you? And he finally said, oh, you're a priest? He says, I left. I left. And now I'm the street. Well, when this priest met the Pope, he told the Pope that story. What did the Pope say? Tell him to come and see me right now. So St. John Paul left the message this other priest told the beggar. He found him and said, go right now, the Pope wants to see you. He waited for him outside the famous St. Anne the Gates. And he said, well, what did he tell him? Did he ask you to go to confession? He said, no. He asked me to hear his confession. This Mass would be too long for anybody's patience if we listed everything behind the scenes that St. John Paul did and was criticized for because they didn't know the whole story. Just like we heard in the Gospel and the readings. It's better to be criticized for something for doing something good and there's so many professionals out there, so many of us, who criticize, instead of taking our rosary into our hands and praying for those who really love to criticize. So we celebrate today the memory of a man who was a saint, whom the people of St. Casimir's met with myself as well. We remember him. We remember his example of being a true human being. Like we say in Polish, a true human is the best compliment you could receive from anyone. From anyone. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let us pray. For all the baptized, that we proclaim Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. people 
of our towns and cities that they pay attention to the Christian message this Easter and receive it with joy. Let us pray to the Lord. acceptable to God, the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be always conformed to the mysteries of your might and love. We ask this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly It is truly right and just our duty and our at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all to thee, Lord, you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has become our sacred peace. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land and every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers and the saints of heaven, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O Lord, who love the human race and always walk with us on our journey throughout this life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once before the apostles and disciples at Emmaus, so now for us, he opens the scriptures, he breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they can become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, the Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, gave, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And whom you have seen at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, the chalice of everlasting blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which, in which we show forth the pastoral sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us. Grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity amongst the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have holy communion. Lord, renew your church in Buffalo by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with our Pope Francis, the priests and deacons of your church, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn apart by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ particularly my parents and godparents, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection. Give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live forever in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, St. Casimir, Prince of the Poor, St. John Paul, Pope of the Family, St. Maximilian Po, 
Colbe, St. Faustina, St. Teresa of Calcutta, and Louis de Montfort. And all the saints we shall praise and exalt you with the apostles and martyrs through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him with him O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
St. John Paul who stood right here. What a privilege it is for us to gather here today at this very altar. I'm sure that he's with us, particularly because we're singing, because he loved to sing. So did our patron, St. Catherine. Maybe now you know where all this music comes from. Thank you to our music director, Dr. Vitakoski, and our ministries here, as well as now the Technological Mission Ministry. Uh, who makes this message possible? The Lord be with you. 